Hello everyone! If you're looking for detailed information regarding all the needed documents for your PR application, then you've come to the right place. First, just to keep you in the loop, let me show you the stack of documents I had to scan each paper, one by one, organize them in folders, merge the files together, then compress them to the needed size and then upload them. Okay guys, there's a systematic way of grouping and uploading files on your PR application. In the supporting document section in your application, you are already given the following titles. You can only upload documents next to these categories. If you're applying with your partner and children, then you need to also gather documents related to them. For the sake of simplifying things, I'm going to be mainly focusing here on the list of needed documents for the main applicant. Okay, so without further delay, let's just dive into the different categories. I want to clarify that every applicant will have a different set of required documents and that's based on the information you provided in your application. So say for example you've mentioned that you've worked in two different companies, then obviously IRCC will give you two rows, each designated for you to upload the supporting documents for every employment record you have had. On the other hand, an applicant who mentioned that he has worked in only one company, then obviously he will be given only one row to upload all the supporting documents for his employment record. For the main applicant, the different needed categories will most probably include the following. Passport or travel document, marriage certificate, police certificate. As you see, in my case, the system automatically created three separate rows to upload three different police certificates from three different countries. I'll be explaining why is that so shortly. Proof of upfront medical exam, education, diplomas and degrees, employment records, again, in my application, two rows have been added automatically. You might have only one or even three, depending on how many employment information you've included in your application. Proof of means of financial support, digital photo, and client information. Each file you upload should not be more than four megabytes in size. I used to use a website called I Love PDF in order to merge all the scanned documents together and compress them to the needed size, which is four megabytes. Have in mind that the scanned copy should be in colors and any document that is not in English, you should translate it to either English or French at a sworn translator or a certified translator. What's nice about your application is that you kind of have an idea where each file will go. But probably you thought that, for example, in the passport section, you will be given several rows, each designated for you to upload the passport that you have, which in fact, it's not true. You will have one tab to upload all the passports that you have, the current and expired ones, and the total file size should not exceed four megabytes. Okay, so without further ado, let me break down the different categories and what you need to upload in each category. Regarding the passport section, you need to upload your current and expired passports and in case you are like myself with dual nationalities, then obviously you'll find yourself scanning a lot of different passports. Just make sure that the end file is less than 4 megabytes in size and that you are scanning the files in colors. As for the marriage certificate, you will not see this tab if you haven't mentioned in your application that you are married. Now, normally, you will have your marriage certificate in the official language of your current country of residency, which is probably not English or French. In that case, you'll have to translate them to either English or French at a certified translator or a sworn translator and upload both the original and the translated version on your application. For the police certificate, if you've mentioned in your application that you've lived in more than one country for more than six months in the past 10 years, then you'll obviously have several rows, each designated for the country that you've lived in. In my case, I had three different rows as I had lived in three different countries, so I had to upload three different police certificates. Some countries have a long process to issue your police certificate. So for example, in my case, I had to request police certificates from UK and I opt for the express uh, service. In that case, they processed my application quickly and I had it delivered to my address in a matter of like one week or 10 days. But of course it costed me more than it should have. I paid around 143 pounds uh, to get my police clearance. My advice for you, once you get your invitation to apply, proceed quickly in getting your uh, police certificate, as this is potentially one of the main papers which might take longer than you had anticipated to get it. And in some cases, if you have any misspelling, then you'll have to issue another one to make sure that uh, the name that they've mentioned on your police certificate actually matches the name that you've provided on the IRCC application or on your passport. Proof of medical exam. Once you get your invitation to apply, head over your nearest certified medical center in order to have certain medical exams done. Now, in certain cases, the exam results will not be sent to your email, but you will be given a paper similar to this one, which you can upload on your IRCC application as a proof that you did your medical exam. 
In all cases, don't worry, the medical center will automatically upload the results on your IRCC application. Regarding your education, you need to upload the following documents after each other in one compressed file. Your ALS exam results, your ECA report, your master's degree, your transcript of grade for your master's degree, undergraduate degree, transcript of grade for your undergraduate degree. Of course, in your application, if you've mentioned that you have a PhD degree or you've taken any other certification, then you need to also upload it in this section here. As for the employment record, in case in your application you've mentioned that you've worked in three different uh, companies, then obviously IRCC will automatically generate three different rows, each designated for you to upload all the supporting documents for that employment record. For each employment you've mentioned in your application, you need to add the following documents if available. Remember, the more documents you upload, the better, as it proves that you've worked in that company. But having said that, this does not mean that you have to upload all the lists that I'm going to be mentioning next. So first, your contract. Second, reference letter or duties letter that includes your duties as per the NOC code that you've mentioned in your application. Third, salary certificate. Fourth, bank statement for the first three months, last three months, and any random three months in between the years that you've worked in that company, just to prove that that company was sending you a salary to your bank account uh, at the end of every month, which proves that you were actually working in that company. In some cases, you can also prove your employment by showing pay slips or let's say the check that you were receiving at the end of the month, which actually proves that you've worked in that company from a specific date till a specific date that you've mentioned in your application. You can upload other documents such as your exit letter, joining email, salary increase letter, which also should match your bank statement or your pay slips in certain months in case you started receiving a higher salary than you used to before. On a side note, it is important to identify your exact knock for the job title that you've mentioned in your application. Proof of financial need. I'm sure you're aware that to be eligible for express entry, you need to have a certain amount in your bank account. So for example, if you're applying on your own, then you need to have a minimum of 13,000 Canadian dollars. If you are applying with your spouse, then you need 16,000. If you are applying with a family of four members, then you need up to 24,000 Canadian dollars, etc. In short, while you were filling your application, you were asked to indicate the amount of money you're bringing with you to Canada or you have in your savings. To prove that, you need to provide bank statement for the last six or three months. In some cases, it would be also good to, to provide them with your bank clearance uh, letter, which proves that you are not in that. Digital photo. You'll also have a section in IRCC application to upload your digital photo, which should have dimensions similar to this one. In your additional document section, you can upload the following documents all merged together in one file. Your cover letter, letter of explanation, birth certificate, forms from IRCC website, along with your travel history. Regarding your cover letter, you can mention who you are, with who you're applying, when you got your invitation to apply, and the list of all the documents that you have uploaded in each of the document category. This will give the case officer a clearer picture of what to expect. Needless to say, you should also sign the cover letter that you are including in your application. As for the letter of explanation, this is often necessary if you have anything to clarify. For example, if you couldn't get a specific paper because of a valid reason or any other piece of information. In specific cases for FSW applicants, you might also need to upload these forms that are found on IRCC website. IMM 5406 form and IMM 5669 form. You need to also upload your birth certificate for yourself as well as your dependents such as your partner and children, your CV and your partner's CV, and any additional information you weren't able to write in the application or did not have a designated tab to upload it such as travel history. Although in the application itself you were asked to list your travel history for the past 10 years, however, if you're like myself and constantly travel, then obviously you will not have enough space to add all your destinations. This is where you can upload your complete list of uh, travel destinations through an Excel file and upload it in this section. In some cases, if you've mentioned that you have a provincial nomination or a job offer from a Canadian employer, then you obviously have specific rows designated for you to upload supporting documents in that regard. Okay guys, if you're still watching till now, this means that you like this video, so don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you wouldn't miss any similar content. Goodbye!